Hello, and welcome to the InMonta Multi-Domain Service Orchestration Demo. The real business value for telecom operators and service providers comes from multiple network services that span multiple domains and vendor-specific solutions. Managing services in such a complex environment is not an easy task. Multi-domain service orchestration is therefore a critical component for truly end-to-end -end automation to minimize the time to market as well as the total cost of ownership. In this demonstration, we will showcase Inmonta's solution for on-demand provisioning of secure eLAN connectivity across physical and virtual domains, driven by a self-service customer portal. The setup for this demo consists of a core network domain based on Juniper routers, an OpenStack cloud environment, a security domain based on Fortinet virtual firewalls, which will be deployed on top of OpenStack, the OSS, represented by the resource inventory called Netbox, and finally, in Monta Service Orchestrator for multi-domain service orchestration. My demo will consist of the following steps. I will create a service order via a customer portal. This service order will be validated and deployed by the orchestrator. Finally, I will show you how each resource involved in the service delivery has been configured and demonstrate in Mantra's self-healing feature. Let's go to the customer self-service portal to create a service order. The customer self-service portal allows us to input the service attributes. The service is a traditional layer 2 service with a bandwidth contract. It also includes a default security rule. The customer edge equipment is allowed to use public DNS, like for instance Google DNS. As a recap, the service consists of the following attributes. A service ID, the service bandwidth, which is enforced through a policer on the backbone routers facing the customer equipment, a security rule, the subnet of the customer LAN, the customer locations. These locations are listed from the network inventory. The service state is displayed and progressively updated by the orchestrator. The different values for the states are stored, validated, this means that all service entries are valid, deploying, and up when all the resources have been successfully configured. It may take a while to get the service in the up state as there is a VM to be spun off and configured. So in the meantime, let's switch to the service catalog. The service catalog lists all the service attributes that have been exposed in the self-service portal. In Monta Service Modeling defines the types and the constraints for each service attribute. The bandwidth attribute is a number that can be initialized and also updated after the service is created. The customer location is a text string that cannot be modified once the service is created. This is defined in the service modeling. The blocking of public DNS is a yes or no attribute. This can be initialized and also updated after the service is created. The network address is a text string that cannot be modified once the service is created. Once a service order has been validated, a new entry is recorded in the service inventory, which stores all service instances created by Inmonta. The web GUI displays the attributes and the configured state for a service that has already been provisioned. Service attributes can be modified via the edit button or via rest calls. The button called show resources lists all the underlying resources which are involved in delivering the services. Fortinet, OpenStack, and Juniper routers. Let's check that the different services have been configured according to the original intent by using a small app. This app reports which DNS can be used by the customer servers and checks that the bandwidth contract is correctly enforced. Let's pick up location 1 and let's get the IP subnet for the customer edge. We will first resolve the domain name in monta.com. The public DNS can be used to resolve it and the traffic can go up to the configured VPN bandwidth.
This step of the demo consists of showing what has been configured on two resources, the Fortinet firewall and the Juno S routers. For Fortinet, let's go to a specific firewall instance and check the IPv4 policies. We need to go to Policies and Objects IPv4 Policies. There is a rule called Public DNS. This rule is grayed out as our original intent did allow the usage of Public DNS. On the Juniper routers, let's go to PE2 and type the following CLI commands to highlight the changes with the initial configuration file. Show configuration, pipe, compare clean.cfg. This command highlights the configlet, which has been provisioned by the orchestrator adapter. It shows the interface, firewall, and routing instances that have been modified by the orchestrator. The objective of this step is to explain how Inmanta self-healing can help service providers to minimize the impact of manual misconfiguration on end-to-end -end services. Let's assume that a network engineer makes a typo when configuring one of the resources involved in the VPN service. This misconfiguration may not be immediately noticed, in particular if it happens just before a new knock shift starts its work. Let's go to one of the Juniper's PEs, namely PE2, as PE2 has been used for the service provisioning. We need to launch JunoS configure mode to modify the configuration file. Then edit firewall stanza to modify the service bandwidth contract. Let's change the policer bandwidth for a new value. Bandwidth limit equals 500 kilobit. Then commit and quit. Let's check if the commit has been successful by using the CLI again. Indeed, the bandwidth is now configured with 500 kilobit per second. The service bandwidth is no longer in sync with what has been sold to the customer. Let's go back to the orchestrator operational console. In the list of settings, I have configured a repair interval of 60 seconds, just for the sake of the demonstration. In real life, this repair interval would probably be 60 minutes or more, depending on the resource performances and service SLA. Let's dive into the detailed reporting of the resource that I have manually modified by clicking on the magnifying glass. There are indeed actions automatically performed by the orchestrator to ensure the desired state is restored. Let's switch back to the Juniper PE configuration and use the CLI again to find out about the policer bandwidth. Indeed, it has been restored to the value configured in the original intent so the configured state is now in sync with the desired state. This self-healing concludes our end-to-end multi-domain service orchestration.